For visual distinction's sake, the black camera in the video will represent the original ZV-1 from 2020, and the white camera will represent the new ZV-1 Mark II. But both versions of the camera exist in their black and white counterparts. Be sure to utilize the chapters on the video, and hey, if you enjoy what I do and want to support the channel, consider dropping a super thanks via the button below. Alright, so let's talk lens first. The biggest difference between the two cameras are the zoom lenses. The original ZV-1 is rocking the 24-70 f1.8-2.8 Zeiss lens, and the Mark II is rocking the new 18-50 f1.8-4 f4 Zeiss lens. The 18mm wider view of the Mark II is probably the biggest selling point for some, and controversial for others. On one hand, it's great for vlogging, it's great for selfies, and in general, going to be able to capture more of the environment. Because of those reasons alone, some folks are going to be able to overlook the fact that it only goes up to 50 millimeters. On the other hand, there are folks out there that would prefer to have that slightly longer 70 millimeter reach. Not to mention, the Mark II has a greater shift in aperture change as we zoom across the range. The previous 24-70 has an enticing f1.8 to f2.8, keeping a favorable aperture value on a telephoto end. On the Mark II, we hit f2.8 already at 24mm, and f4 as soon as we hit 35mm. While both cameras aren't a bokeh-heavy cameras, nor should we expect them to be given the nature of the small 1-inch sensor, low-light performance would definitely take a hit on the Mark II if if you're using anything beyond 18 to 24 millimeters. Don't get me wrong, 18 millimeter f1.8 would just be as comparable as the 24 millimeter f1.8 on the Mark I. It's just again, when you start zooming past 24 millimeter on the Mark II, that's when you lose more stops of light in the dark in comparison. But during the day, as you can see, the huge difference in framing between the widest ends of both cameras, and both have active stabilization turned on. This is the biggest flack that the original ZV-1 got. The 24mm lens was not wide enough for vlogging, and putting the camera in active mode exacerbated the closeness of the lens. But very quickly, there came third-party accessories that expanded the field of view by the form of a lens converter. By adding this attachment, the effective field of view is close to 18mm, solving the issue that most users had. And what's great about the lens attachment is its quick release. We can remove the attachment if we want to go back and use the original lens. It kind of makes it an interchangeable lens camera. Now, the lens converter piece does make the overall setup front heavy, making it slightly uncomfortable to hold, and it loses out its compactness. That's where I think the Mark II really shines, as it already has the 18mm built in in all of its lightweight glory. However, for $70 though, it might not be a bad trade-off if you already have the ZV-1 already and you just want to make it wider. Or you can pick up the first ZV-1 at a lower cost in the used market and pair it up with this adapter. But let's see how they truly compare. Right off the bat, the Mark II still ends up looking wider, but the Mark I with the converter does not look too shabby. But if you care about optical quality though, Yes, using the adapter does lessen the quality of the edges. And in case you're wondering, no, this converter does not fit the Mark II. The Mark II has a slightly larger circumference around the area. Now, if you're sweaty, you already looked at the specs, you will already notice that this new lens does not have built-in optical lens stabilization. And trust me, as a user who does not like electronic-only stabilization, the ZV-1 Mark II surprisingly does not have those weird digital motion blurs that you would normally see when a camera or a software tries to compensate for the shakes. It still loses out to true optical lens stabilization, but it's not too far off now compared to before. That was a bit of a rough test. Let's do something more realistic like vlogging and talking. Now, because it's wider, we see more of the bounce in the corner. It's a little bit more apparent versus the Mark I's 24mm, but the center frame does not look jarring at all. And that's where the audience will mainly focus on. Putting it side by side, the 18mm does feel better for the selfie style vlogging. And here's the stabilization test with the converter. And I gotta say, despite being an external attachment, the stabilization in the Mark I still steadies the shot quite well. In terms of weight, both cameras are roughly the same. Appearance-wise, they look almost identical. They have the same buttons and placements, the same tactile feel. Both background defocus and product showcase buttons are still in the same position. Background defocus easily blurs out the background for you, and product showcase turns off face and eye autofocus so you can do show and tell of your products. Turning it to the bottom, it uses the same battery. But here, you'll notice that the quarter inch 20 screw hole is moved off to the side, which is helpful when you're using quick release plates and mounting it to a tripod. These accessories, if short enough, won't block the battery door. Moving on to inputs and outputs. The only thing different here is the USB port. The Mark II is now using USB-C, 
Not only is it more common, but it's more powerful. Charging it through the port should be quicker and allows for better live stream and webcam capabilities. Coming back to the top, the Micro has a change in appearance. And while I do prefer how it looks on the original ZV-1, the new ZV-1 Mark II offers more direction control with its mic directivity features. Let's have a listen. So this is the original ZV. This does not have any sort of mic directivity at all. So I'm just gonna walk away and let Vivian talk. Okay, I wonder where Jason went, but I'm gonna be talking now. Let's go ahead and get Jason back in the frame. Jason. And now I'm back in the frame. So let's see what that sounds like. Hi, my name is Jason Vong. We're currently testing out the front directivity on the new ZV and we got Vivian behind us. Go ahead and say something, Vivian. Hi, it's Vivian. We're at a beautiful park right now. Very beautiful. Hi, my name is Jason Vaughn. We're currently testing out the odd direction directivity on the new ZV. We've got Vivian behind us. Go ahead and say something, Vivian. Hi, it's Vivian. We're at a beautiful park right now. Excellent. Hi, my name is Jason Vaughn. We're currently testing out the rear directivity on the new ZV. And we've got Vivian behind us. Go ahead and say something, Vivian. Hi, it's Vivian. We are currently at a beautiful park right now. So one of the new features on these new ZV cameras is the auto directivity. So when it detects a face, it will prioritize the audio to the front directivity. But if I walk away, Oh, Jason left the frame, so now it should be prioritizing towards the rear. Let's get Jason back into frame. Jason! All right, now I'm back into the frame. Thank you for holding the camera for me. And the audio <laughs> should be kicking back in now. And as always, while the built-in mic on the ZV cameras are generally better than most, I'd still recommend investing in a dedicated shotgun mic or a lav mic system for better audio. Because remember, both cameras do support external microphone inputs. The wind muffs are also different between generations. The original has more of a traditional dead cat fluff look, while the new one looks like it has a wacky hairdo. And that's because Sony, as a company, is making a push for sustainability using recycled materials wherever they can. Moving on to the MI Hot Shoe. There is no change here, which I am slightly disappointed about. Even the new Mark II still cannot use the higher-end digital shotgun mics like the ECM-V10. These kinds of mics offer more control and better audio quality. It, however, still can use other multi-interface Hot Shoe mics like the old-school ECM, XY, ST, 1M, and the recent G1. Yeah just G1. But again, those don't offer much control unless you use a three and a half millimeter connection cable. Moving on, the menu system has a huge overhaul on the Mark II. We are now on Sony Menu 2.0. Menu functions are better categorized and things should be a lot easier to find. On top of that, it can be fully navigated by touch. The original ZV-1 only supported touch focus, but beyond that, that's pretty much it. Now, with the new touch support on the Mark II, we also have a touch-specific UI on our shoot screen. We can trigger things like recording, switch to different mic directivity, and change modes. Swiping left or right will bring up a platter of options, and swiping up will bring up the quick function menu. Now, unfortunately, the main touch UI screen is not customizable, and I can see some options here that I would like to swap out for something else. And because of the touch capabilities, this makes the Mark II much more casual and beginner-friendly. If you're used to controlling settings on your smartphone, you will feel familiar here. The new feature Sony introduced is My Image Style. Basically, if you're shooting in intelligent auto mode, you can simply adjust the brightness and color of your footage with an adjustment slider. You do not need to know camera terminologies or how they work to get the look that you want. But like closing the camera app on a smartphone, turning off the camera will erase the settings you've adjusted. I kind of wish they allowed you to save a couple of presets. And if you select touch tracking autofocus with AE, auto exposure, the camera will expose properly on whatever you tap on the screen. And you can make any adjustments with the slider. We can of course disable some part of the touch or disable entirely if you're more of a button only user. And the Mark II does a great job catering to touch only users and button only users, and users using a hybrid between the two. But the Mark II also has a screen reader feature, which is available in the accessibility tab for those who need extra assistance in menu navigation. Aside from that, screen quality is the same. Personally, I was hoping the Mark II would make sunny weather available in 4K. A brighter display would definitely have helped tremendously when we film outdoors during high noon, but alas. However, sunny weather is available in 1080p. Let's talk video quality. Not only are we getting the same visuals, but we're also getting the same 4K up to 30 frames per second and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. So no change in that department there. Still 8-bit 420 for those who are wondering. However, the Mark II does not have the high frame rate feature with the 960 frames per second slow motion capability, something the Mark I has. Instead, the Mark II has S and Q now, which stands for slow and quick. It does support higher quality slow motion, albeit capped at 120 frames per second, but with 
unlimited recording as opposed to the few seconds of the 960 frames per second. That's the S in slow. Q, quick, means it can do quick video time lapses. Instead of selecting a high frame rate, you would select a lower one between 1 to 15 for a nice 1080p time lapse video. Color wise and skin tones is the same as the ZV1, at least to our eyes and our skin tones. But what's new is the Sin of Log feature. This was introduced in the ZV-E1. Basically, it automatically locks you into a cinematic frame rate of 24p and overlays two 35 by one black bars over your footage to create a more cinematic feel. And I know it sounds silly, but it's a lot of fun because it makes it more accessible for folks who still want that Hollywood look without needing to learn the complications of color grading. The available profiles honestly look really good and you can pull off a lot of different moods and vibes. And I kind of wish these cinematic colors are available without the black bars and in photo mode as well. However, if you want to dabble in cinematic color grading yourself, S-Log3 and Hybrid Log Gamma picture profiles are still available. Moving on to recording limit and overheating. Here are my findings using genuine first-party Sony batteries and a V90 SD card. Keep in mind, if you plan on doing any long-form recording, it's best to set the auto power temperature to high and using a fast write speed SD card. So for 4K 30p, there was a staggering difference. The Mark II was able to record up to 56 minutes, while the Mark I only got up to 33 minutes. On both cameras, the heat warning did come on, about 43 minutes in with the Mark II and 24 minutes in with the Mark I. 4K 24p, on the other hand, surprisingly, we got better results. The Mark II got up to an hour and three minutes before the battery depleted, whereas the Mark I got up to 57 minutes. The Mark II did not get a heat warning, but the Mark I got it around the 49 minute mark. And finally, for 1080p 60, the Mark I depleted its battery first, but it was able to get roughly 60 minutes in, and the Mark II got about 64 minutes. So, pretty consistent. Moving on to autofocus. Both cameras uses phase and contrast detection autofocus, so the same fast, reliable Sony autofocus that we come to know and love. Real-time eye autofocus and touch tracking focus work great on both cameras. But the difference here is that animal eye autofocus is now available in video mode on the Mark II, as opposed to just a photo mode on the Mark I. In the Mark II, we now have multi-face recognition. So if you're filming in intelligent auto mode, when the camera detects a second face on the screen, it will automatically stop down on the aperture to get both subjects in focus. So let's go ahead and talk about photography. First off, let me say this. The ZV series have always been marketed as video cameras with photo as a thing that it can also do. With that said, the Mark I has both mechanical and electronic shutter, whereas the Mark II just has electronic. Shouldn't be a huge issue with a lot of daytime photos and outdoor photos, but if you photograph somewhere with particular LED lights indoors, you might run into issues with banding in your images when you shoot with electronic shutter. You won't have that issue with Mechanico. However, unlike the ZV-1F, both cameras can shoot both RAW and JPEG. And finally, price and do I recommend it? $899 versus $749. Now, if you have the original ZV-1 or you're thinking about picking up the original because you can save a bit of money that way, you kind of have to gauge if the wider lens and the easier operation on the Mark II would be a good enough upgrade for you. If you just need it to be wider, then again, for just $70, there is that third-party lens converter accessory, albeit it does make the whole setup front heavy. The Mark II is a nice and light package with the ultra-wide lens built in if you can just the full cost. Now, I wouldn't recommend getting a brand new Mark I at $749 with the adapter because at that point, with everything added up, you might as well just get the Mark II. But if you don't have a ZV-1 or you're coming from an older point and shoot like an RX-100 Mark V or something, and you need something that's easy and simple to use for you yourself or your significant other, the ZV-1 Mark II is worth considering. The new touch supported menu paired with smartphone-like functions just makes the Mark II an easier camera to use overall for casuals and beginners. And again, the 18 millimeter lens just makes selfie vlogging so much easier. If you like what I do and want to support the channel, you can do so via super thanks underneath the player or simply stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. 
Use my link down below to test it out. And when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code Jason Vong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.